didn't respond because I just didn't want to get into it. But I just had this experience when I came to the U.S. Um, mostly in 2014, 15, 16, not at, at first, but as I think Black Lives Matter started picking up where I would just be getting very annoyed at people thinking that I would be left leading my politics. And that's really where my interest in this topic began. It was feeling like I was being pulled into something that I didn't want to be pulled into. And like, I didn't want other people speaking for me when I was capable of being outspoken myself. So I started talking about these uh, topics. And I'm against critical uh, race theory for, I guess, a couple of reasons. One, it's illogical and unempirical and unscientific. It assumes that inequality exists in the world and then it works backwards from that. So it tries to be critical about the relations between people. And I, I think that if you're starting from a point where you're not even coming from something that can be proven, that doesn't make any sense. And then obviously it also reduces people to immutable traits when a person is a human being, which is way more than some one characteristic that you can define. So it reduces the complexity of what it means to be to be human. So I'm not sure how long that took, but that, that's my brief introduction. That's perfect. Nicole, were you about to say something? Sorry. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask um, Eric, uh, like he spoke about different, um, uh, like different terms of racism or different definitions like that, that's a general question for everybody though how do you in the U.S. define racism like is it still going with that Wikipedia nonsense where they're like oh if you hate another person based on their ethnicity their religion their culture blah 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 or is there like an official definition that truthfully says that racism is a system and not an opinion or I, I doubt but <laughs> let me still ask I mean, so with like with any word, you know, there's never really an official definition. Like you can look in the dictionary, but if the dictionary definition isn't what people are using, then, you know, right. The dictionary is supposed to reflect the reality of how people use the word. But mm. so so looking in the dictionary kind of gets things backwards. But I mean, I think racism is just one of those words that is always going to be like it's going to have multiple meanings. Um, I, I think it's useful to, to look at at least two definitions of racism, one being a sort of psychological or interpersonal, which, which is like a reflection of your beliefs, your attitudes, right, your values, um, and whether it's seeing another race as seeing one race as superior to another or seeing people as sort of not fully human beings or whatever, like their degrees. Um, and then another would be the, the socio-institutional sense of racism, uh, where that ha has to do with, you know, systems in that, you know, illicitly privilege uh, one racial group at the expense of another or, or something like that. So, I mean, there's, you know, we'll, we'll never all agree on one definition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But there does, there, there does seem to be a favored definition uh, among contemporary uh, CRT um, activists and scholars. And that does deal with the uh, sy systemic slash institutional uh, definition of racism. And it also deals with the fact that only white people can be racist. Um, a black person cannot be racist to a white person. That's just plain old discrimination, right? So, mm -hmm. um, when, when everything is based on power differentials, um, then you're, you're dealing with the uh, systemic slash institutional uh, version of racism. And don't get me started on microaggressions. <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> we'll just add yeah. though, it's interesting. Ibram Kendi does have a chapter about anti-white racism in his book. So he's actually one of the few on the many we'll call CRT side, right? In the popular yeah. sense, who does acknowledge yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 not to get on the tangent um, to quote Eric, but you know I don't the, the differences between racism and prejudice and discrimination. That's a whole nother conversation we could probably have outside of this one. And how all of those words have just been so misconstrued and kind of just blended into one act, right? Um, so Nicole, I think that that was a really poignant question. 
Um, sorry, it, I didn't want to distract. I'm oh, sorry. No, 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 no. I thought that that was a really poignant question because um, it, it, it also takes us to sort of the root of why this is such a confusing and, and such a, a, a divisive conversation is because we're not all starting at the same starting point. And we're all coming in from these various levels and, 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 and interpretations of words. And when we don't have sort of this universal understanding or the agreement on, you know, a word is why it's so incredibly difficult for us to even address the issue. We can't even address the definition of the issue. I'm telling you, that's so true. Yeah. Uh, if I can jump in and kind of tie back to part of the original question, if there's a difference between uh, <clears throat> excuse me, diversity trains and critical race theory, from my point of view, I don't know what it is. And it kind of seems like the exposure that I had as uh, going into middle school with a uh, diversity training evolved into critical race. Uh, that's from my perspective, I could very well be wrong on that and just not know the differences. But to kind of go into what, like, I don't know what a good diversity training should actually accomplish without knowing who the individuals are and, and what the particular problem mm -hmm. is. So I feel like that's something that once again, is kind of that broad brush where, okay, well, what's the actual issue? Is there, you know, the conflicts between uh, X, Y, Z people in, you know, this location, what, what is the problem that we're trying to accomplish? And then to kind of tie to the, the racism definition, you know, when uh, Nicole asked what the definition was, I raised my hands because like, I remember a couple of years ago seeing a post on Facebook that talked about the change from what I grew up with the understanding of racism being where if I see somebody of a different skin color who I dislike or, you know, have these uh, set beliefs about because of, uh, you know, that skin color or whatever aspect of them, then, you know, that's racism. So for somebody to, you know, like let's say Eric, and, you know, both of us being on the anti-critical race theory side, if he were to dislike me because I'm white, uh, would I need to know, you know, his yearly income or like <laughs> what his uh, status in society is? Does he need to know mine in order for that to be racist? Uh, so that's why, like when I saw that, it just seems so bizarre. Um, so I think when we're talking about what anti-racism is, a lot of times I kind of look at it as like normal, person, you know, the people that I, I felt I grew up around and, and then racist. So when we're talking about anti-racism, I think this is when we get into fragments of what the definition is of racism. And oftentimes we are talking at different levels. You know, it's almost like we're in a text and it didn't go through or responding to something that someone thought they said and didn't, or, um, you know, we're just not talking on the same level oftentimes. So that mm -hmm. Which again kind of ties to my initial answer uh, at the beginning of the panel of you know I, I do agree with wanting to be more um i'm going to say inclusive but like just you know get, have everyone get along uh but oftentimes the way in which we go about that is, is where i uh you know fall onto the anti side. Can, can i uh respond to that um i too believe that dialogue is imperative to uh, doing all that just because, not only because we need to understand the definitions and you know have a shared understanding of these terms, um, but because we are coming at it from different uh, angles as two people have already said, and we need to dialogue to realize where we're coming from and better be able to get to where we want to go. The problem is not everybody wants to talk. I don't, I don't think I've had a conversation with a, uh, you know, uh, adamant CRT uh, proponent that lasted more than 10 seconds because I asked too many questions, right? That uh, that person didn't want to answer or that person thought were inherently racist because I was asking for elaboration or clarification. <laughs> I'm black, right? So that's happening to me too. And um, if we can't have these conversations, we're not going to get anywhere. I wonder why we can't have these conversations. Is it because they don't really have any answers? Um, is it because uh, the idea of critical race theory from the get-go was a distrust of classical liberal values? I don't know 
what it is. I do know that it is like pulling teeth. Somebody mm-hmm. stand it, Nicole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can I say something about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think um when we look at the why, the, the why you just said, like why don't some people want to talk? Um, I can only speak from my perspective of as a white, as a white woman in a predominantly white society. Um, I have made the experience that when I talk to my fellow white people about racism, it's always something that we push into the right wing corner. You know, we push that very, very far away from us. We are like, oh, I'm not racist. I have a black neighbor, a black cousin, a black co-worker, you name it. You know, they come up with all types of excuses. We don't want to wear this shoe. So we also don't want to be accused. We don't want um, that in our work we are supposed to be doing. We don't want to do that because we think by ignoring it, we cannot be guilty. You know, like if I'm not acting like a racist, like if I'm not running around um, insulting black people with the N word, that means I'm not a racist. We've not yet understood, like uh, like Dr. Elia said, that um, we've not all come to a mutual understanding of what racism is. Now, there are people that are straight up dumb, dumb when it comes to that topic. They have no idea and they also do not want to know because how can we after 2020, I mean, after 2020, where there were global um, BLM protests, still not know that racism is an everyday problem for black people and people of color all over the world. So if you still don't know, if you still deny it, you chose ignorance at this point. And I think that's the why that's the, you know, talking about uncomfortable topics has always been something that white people have been avoiding. I mean, I do critical whiteness trainings. I work with white people. Um, My husband is black and we have three children. So I'm very, um, not affected because I'm not black, but I see what's happening to my kids, to my family, to the people I love, you know? And I see that this is coming from a point of ignorance because a lot would have no longer been, or would no longer be happening if we would have acknowledged um, our mistakes a lot earlier, you know, yeah. Go ahead, Desiree. Okay, so I, I found what um, Nicole just said very interesting. And I, the first thing I want to point out is that she's using, she said, my fellow white people. And this is something that has happened to me since, especially since being in the US, where people will say something like sister, or like they make me feel like I'm part of some group that I never signed up for. I think that people should have the ability to say they don't want to to join in your cause or your movement. I would be very happy to go about my days never hearing about Black Lives Matter, never caring about critical race theory. I don't think there's something wrong with me for that. I also don't think that there's something wrong with people who don't share my skin color because they're they're also non-white people and non-Black people who are racist. I think if they don't want to acknowledge those things inside themselves, and I'm also not saying that they necessarily are, that's their right. I don't think they have to be forced to join some cause or movement or that that they need to do that. So I just want to say, as someone who you would think would want to be changing people's minds, I, I don't really care. Another thing I want to point out was that you mentioned 2020 and all these protests that w- happened worldwide and globally. I don't think that those protests were just. I think that it depends on what you're talking about. So there are a couple of issues that come up with the, with the Black Lives Matter protests. There's the police brutality stuff, which I think in specific cases that can be an issue, but isn't actually an issue if you're looking um, from a, I guess, global perspective when I'm talking about data in terms of how often someone is unfairly treated by the police without them having brought some of that upon themselves. That is different from saying you want to possibly reform the system in some way, but much of the rhetoric that I've heard from Black Lives Matter when it comes to police brutality, I simply don't agree with. Um, It's not out of ignorance. It's out of spending a lot of time looking into these topics because I can't ignore them because they keep being pushed in my face when I actually don't want to have them in my face. Um, And then there's also, I don't know, like the microaggression stuff. Um, Again, something I really, really want to point out is that there are people who are not Black and not white who are also prejudiced. 
there's like it's something that a lot of people are like it's just a thing that people do and I, I especially there was this one statement as someone who is from not from the U.S. but from Jamaica which is a majority black country and it was talking about people experience black people all over the world experiencing racism etc the experience of every black person is not the same even within the same country. Like I, in, I'm in this another area that I'm usually in and I can already see that my experience here is gonna be very different from where I was somewhere else in the United States. And then even people within the same place, they don't walk away with the same impressions from the same place because they're coming with different ideas about what it means when a certain interaction happens. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I totally think that people have the right to say, I don't want to join up for your cause. I don't think they should be forced to do that. And I don't think like a, the, like what you were just describing, and it's not just your perspective. You sound so sure of what you're thinking, but a lot of people who are very well intentioned also took time to research. They don't agree. Like they, they just, they, they don't agree. And that's, I would describe myself as, as one of those people. So it doesn't mean that they're a terrible person because they, they don't want to go about solving issues that they see in the world in the way that you might want to. And they might also care more about another issue. Like there are other problems in the world and they maybe just don't want to focus on things like racism. So I think that's my, that's my two cents. Um, go ahead, Dr. Casey. So um, I, I, I um... sorry, I, can I just, I just want to say, I, I, unfortunately I, I've run out of time. I need to go, it's already almost one o'clock in the night here and uh, so I'm trying, my daughter is sleeping downstairs and I'm trying to have an ear on her. So pl I'm so sorry, but I need to go. I'm so, so sorry. I hope you guys can finish this. Time. It was I'm nice so having you. Very nice I'm meeting I'm so you. sorry. Guys. Please, I would like to connect with you guys on Instagram, Very especially nice Eric, if it's possible. Thank you so much, guys, and have a good one. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead, Dr. Casey. So um, while I um, I applaud Desiree's transparency, um, you know, as a professor, I, I push for students to to get to that point to be able to articulate in that way. Um, I think the issue or or the rub happens where you know, and, and to Desiree's point, we all have a right not to want to participate or not to want to have that as our primary cause. You know, I may be more concerned with the whales. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, so we all have a right to care about what it is that we care about. The issue is that when we don't care about an issue, when we try to somehow impose a stop to or somehow uh, 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 stop the progression of other people who might care. And I think that while Desiree, you may have a maturity level where you can say, that may not be what I want to participate in, or that's not my fight, or that's not my primary concern. These other things may be, you have the maturity level to still allow that to happen. I think what happens societally too often is that people don't, they, 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 they don't have the maturity level to allow the progressive conversations to still occur. Um, so I, I think that's the only rub. I respect your position. I respect your maturity in, in, in being able to transparently state it and still move on. My issue are the people who won't allow that conversation to continue to happen because they don't feel as if they are particularly, you know, uh, responsible for or they're not, you know, specifically, you know, uh, 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 being affected by. Therefore, it should not happen. It should not exist because it isn't my problem, it shouldn't exist. Because it isn't my problem, those conversations shouldn't occur. That's where I have, you know, the record scratch. You know, I have a, 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 a personal issue with, you know, just because it isn't your issue, it, it, it's somehow not valid for millions of other people. Um, so, it, and, and that was just the, the one point I just wanted to make sure that I, I raised. Well, I, I think a, a, a big reason why there's so much, uh, animus between different sides of this issue um, is because we want the same things, but we don't agree on the methodology, right? Um, you know, I, I, I don't uh, always agree with uh, the modes of anti-racism, CRT-based uh, modes of anti-racism in my field, and I'm called a white supremacist for that. 
right? Um, we want the same things. I am not a big fan of uh, the way they are doing things. So I want to talk and they won't. So there's that too. There, it's, it's the fragility, like white people do not have a monopoly on the fragility, right? Um, there are uh, black people, people of color uh, abiding by CRT uh, uh, based anti-racism who also don't want to talk, right? Because uh, their tried and true method of dealing with racism is being questioned. And, and I was told this explicitly by people in my field to ask for elaboration and clarification from a person of color who's telling you something is inherently racist. That's a problem. I'm a rhetorician. You know, we are experts in communication who can't communicate, right? That's a problem. And I, and I, I, and I think a lot of that problem comes from, um, I won't say CRT, but the bastardization of CRT. Uh, certain uh, terms like intersectionality means something different. Uh, Mari mm -hmm. Matuda's, um, you know, ask the other question uh, methodology has been twisted, right? Um, Anti-essentialism has been twisted. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I say, why is it different from when it was, you know, um, when it was originally coined, I get pushback and that conversation doesn't happen. And I'm trying to figure out why. Hmm. Was there anyone that had something to add?